everyone hi um, the date is 18 of June Sunday and it's just seven minutes past midnight in Singapore um, this video I'm going to talk to you all about liquidity pool all you need to know about liquidity pool these are the keywords at Fintosh for the last few days why because according to the new guidelines for those of us who would like to earn an active income who want to benefit from the company's referral commission scheme as well as team benefits or ranking benefits, then the criteria to qualify is that you need to activate your wallets by contributing to the liquidity pool. How? You need to contribute a 0 0.1 FTC BEP20 paired with USDT BEP20 to pancake swap contributing to the liquidity pool there via DAPP linked to your cold wallets by linking your Fintosh wallet to a cold wallet which can be trust wallet which is what I used and I already made a demo video on it launched a couple of days back or MetaMask or Token Pocket or BitKeep etc etc all right well recommended is trust wallet that is what i used why because according to what i was told trust wallet is enabled to have multiple wallets as well since most of us will have at least two to three wallets at fintosh therefore it would make sense if you don't have yet any cold or hot wallets to download trust wallet and to link up to your fintosh wallet by importing your Fintosh wallet onto the Trust wallet, okay? Well, that is another video which was already launched a couple of days back. Do refer to that. Now, coming back. So, therefore, based on the new guidelines, um, so those of us, you know, who would like to benefit from the new reward system, well, we have now you know, over the last couple of days, been learning how to do the process of adding on to the liquidity pool. Just that, how many of us really know what liquidity pool means? What are the benefits and what are the risks, potential risks as well? So now I have done some interviews with experts you know i've i've also researched on different sources and um, you know collectively now i have done this information and uh, i'm going to read it out to you so as i said you know this platform that i have um i am really not any form of financial advisor totally i'm not qualified at all Okay, I myself, I'm fumbling through my own finances and trying to get a grip of, uh, you know, how to stay afloat most of the time. So I am no financial advisor, neither am I an employee of Fintosh. I am a passive investor. I am learning while I'm earning. And all this is also extremely new to me. Okay, I have zero crypto background or information or knowledge or expertise or experience. So, um, much as it is quite challenging, it is also very exciting because now I can embark on a new learning curve, you know, try to learn um, as I move along in this 2.0 era of Vintosh. Okay, so without further ado, let me read out to you what I have learned about liquidity pool in Pancake Swap. Okay, liquidity pool in Pancake Swap is a place where people can trade cryptocurrencies. It is a pool of funds contributed by users who deposit pairs of cryptocurrencies. In our case, our pairing is FTC BEP20 plus USDT BEP20. Okay, whichever comes first, it does not matter. It's a pair, it's a couple. Okay, now these pairs are used to provide liquidity to the exchange. 
when you contribute funds to a liquidity pool, you receive special tokens representing your share in that pool. These tokens are called LP or liquidity provider tokens. LP tokens represent your ownership of the funds in the pool and can be used to withdraw your share of the liquidity. The liquidity pool allows users to swap one cryptocurrency for another by utilizing the pooled funds. When you make a trade, the system uses the liquidity in the pool to fill your order. In return, you pay a small fee to the liquidity providers as an incentive for contributing their funds to the pool. By participating in a liquidity pool, you earn a portion of the fees generated by the trading activity in proportion to the amount of liquidity you provided. This incentivizes users to contribute their funds to the pool and ensures there is sufficient liquidity for smooth trading. In summary, a liquidity pool in PancakeSwap is a shared fund provided by users, enabling cryptocurrency trading and allowing users to earn fees by contributing their funds. All right, so I hope this gives you a better understanding of what liquidity pool means. Now, the next section I'm going to talk about will be the several potential benefits in contributing to LP. Number one, it is about earning fees. By providing liquidity to the pool, you become a liquidity provider and earn a portion of the fees generated from trading activities within the pool. This can be a passive income stream, especially if the trading volume on the platform is high. Number two, price stability. Liquidity pools play a crucial role in maintaining price stability for cryptocurrencies. By adding liquidity, you contribute to the overall market depth, reducing the impact of large buy or sell orders on the price. This can be particularly beneficial for long-term investors looking for stability in the value of their coin holdings. Number three, market access. By participating in a liquidity pool, you facilitate trading for others. This can attract more traders to the platform, potentially increasing the overall liquidity and trading volume. Higher liquidity often leads to better market efficiency, tighter spreads and improved trading opportunities. Number four, LP token rewards. When you contribute funds to a liquidity pool, you receive LP tokens in return. These tokens represent your share of the pool and can sometimes be used in yield farming or other DeFi protocols to earn additional rewards. This can provide an avenue for further potential gains or diversification of investment strategies. Number five, community engagement. Participating in a liquidity pool can foster engagement with the broader fintech and cryptocurrency community. It allows you to interact with other liquidity providers, traders, and enthusiasts, potentially leading to valuable insights, collaborations, or networking opportunities. Okay, so there are five potential benefits to contributing to the liquidity pool. Well, but of course, in everything, there are pros, there are cons, right? So the last portion is rather important to note as well. This I'm going to touch on is about when you contribute to the liquidity pool at PancakeSwap or other decentralized exchanges, investors should be aware of the following risks, okay? 
Number one, impermanent loss. Impermanent loss occurs when the price ratio between the tokens in the liquidity pool changes. If the value of one token increases significantly compared to the other, you may experience a loss when withdrawing your funds. This risk is inherent to providing liquidity in pools with volatile assets. All right, number two, smart contract risks. Liquidity pools operate through smart contracts, which are software programs running on the block on the blockchain. While smart contracts are designed to be secure, they can still be vulnerable to bugs, hacks or exploits. Malicious actors can potentially exploit vulnerabilities in the smart contracts, leading to financial losses. Number three, market volatility. The cryptocurrency market is highly volatile and price fluctuations can impact the value of the tokens in the liquidity pool. Sharp price movements can affect the value of your deposited assets, potentially resulting in losses if the market moves unfavorably. Number four, imperfect market conditions. In some cases, the liquidity in a particular pool may be low, leading to wider bid-ask spreads and less favorable trading conditions. This can impact the efficiency of trading, potentially result in slippage, where the executed trade price deviates significantly from the expected price. Number five, user error. Participating in liquidity pools requires interacting with smart contracts and making transactions on the blockchain. Mistakes such as entering incorrect amounts, selecting the wrong token pair, or using unreliable third-party tools can lead to the loss of funds. Number six, regulatory and compliance risks. The regulatory landscape for cryptocurrencies and decentralized exchanges is still evolving. Depending on your jurisdiction, there may be legal and compliance risks associated with participating in liquidity pools. It's crucial to understand and comply with relevant regulations to avoid any legal implications. It's important to conduct thorough research, understand the risks involved, and only invest funds that you are willing to potentially lose. Consider consulting with a financial advisor or doing further due diligence before making any investment decisions in liquidity pools. All right, so these are all the information that I have gathered at this point in time. And I hope that this gives you a better idea of what are the ups and what are the potential downs as well and what contributing to the liquidity pool means to you. Well, um, I'm also adding on to this video to give you in simple terms the difference between V2 and V3 liquidity pool contributions in PancakeSwap. Okay? Because why I'm doing this is that um, in our Fintosh wallet, uh, the one that is linked to PancakeSwap, at first we were, you know, doing liquidity pool contribution there, but it was, it is, okay, using the V3 version, which will not be able to really activate our wallets. Um, somehow, there seems to be you know, still a bug um, in the V3 version. And so despite contributing to the liquidity pool, um, the system still will not be able to activate our wallet. Why? Because there seems to be a bug. So therefore, we have to get around the situation um, to successfully link to, to contribute to the liquidity pool by using an alternative, which is to use the V2 liquidity pool contribution method by doing a more complicated and long-form process to link up the Fintosh wallet via DAPP or Decentralized App 
to link up to our external hot or cold wallets and that's what I did a demo to link up my Fintosh wallet to my Trust wallet so that the Trust wallet so that the Fintosh wallet is imported imported to the Trust wallet and so whatever happens on the Fintosh wallet is being mirrored on the Trust wallet then through the Trust wallet we can then perform the contribution to the liquidity pool Right, and I have videos to demonstrate that the whole process of how you link up your Fintosh wallet to the Trust wallet and what is the step by step guide to contribute to the liquidity pool should you choose to do it. Okay, so once again, uh, this video is to tell you all about liquidity, and now the last portion I would like to highlight what is the difference between the V2 and V3 liquidity pool contributions. All right. So, the main difference lies in how the liquidity is managed and also the flexibility that it offers. V2 liquidity pool contribution. In V2, liquidity is contributed in a fixed ratio between two tokens. For example, if you contribute 1 BNB and 100 BUSD, the ratio remains fixed at 1 is to 100. The liquidity providers must provide equal values of both tokens in the pair and maintain that fixed ratio over time. This means that if the price of one token in the pair changes significantly, it can result in impermanent loss for liquidity providers. Okay? So this is for V2 liquidity pool contribution and below is for V3 liquidity pool contribution, okay? In V3, liquidity providers have more flexibility in specifying price ranges for their contributed liquidity. Instead of contributing liquidity at a fixed ratio, liquidity providers can choose to provide liquidity within a price range referred to as a tick range. This allows liquidity providers to concentrate their liquidity in specific price ranges where they expect more trading activity or want to minimize impermanent loss. The flexibility of V3 enables more efficient use of capital by allowing providers to adjust their liquidity based on market conditions. Overall, the key difference is that V2 liquidity pools require a fixed ratio of tokens to be provided, while V3 liquidity pools offer more granular control over the price ranges in which liquidity is contributed. V3 provides more flexibility for liquidity providers to optimize their positions and potentially mitigate some of the impermanent loss risks associated with V2. Hmm, okay, that's a lot to digest. I really don't know how anyone can fully comprehend this whole liquidity provider thingy. So I salute all those crypto crypto enthusiasts and uh, crypto gurus out there, S seriously. Um, but anyway, uh, I personally, I have contributed to V3. I have also contributed to V2. All right, I contributed to V3 because initially we were taught to link up and to do the liquidity through our Fintosh wallet to pancake swap. Okay, at that time it was still not yet discovered that there would be a bug or that it actually does not acti actually activate our Fintosh wallet. And so then later on there was a V2 version, then I then embarked on the V2. So maybe what I could do right now is to show you what is happening for my V3 version first, okay? Uh, let me now launch into my Fintosh app. So here I am, I'm in the wallet where I have contributed to V to the liquidity pool via V3, okay? 
how I could check it out is number one. Uh, now I'm at the home page, right? So how do I go into it is by, I think, clicking on wallet, is it? Let me try. Yes, by clicking onto wallet and then clicking onto swap trading. Okay. Then uh, when I'm in the swap trading, click on liquidity. And take a look. Okay, so I am actually in what the text says, I am in impermanent loss situation. Okay, because uh, now it is inactive. Why? Let me click on it. Let me try to dissect it also why, okay? Because uh, what happened was when I when I bought the the when I bought the the when I actually paired the liquidity or when I contributed the liquidity, I think at that time the price of the FTC coin one FTC coin at that time was around four hundred dollars. Okay, and so I selected a range because at that time I was in the V3, right? So there was a range to select and the range I put was minimum price this and maximum price this. Actually, I, 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 I accidentally selected this range because I touched the range and it accidentally became this range, okay? But um, over time, somehow the price of the coin fell beyond the minimum price because it became this price like now it's less than the minimum price and so i fell out of the range and so now i'm and i'm in an impermanent loss position and it's called inactive okay so i was told that when I'm in this situation, I still have some hope as long as I do not remove myself from this situation, then this loss will not be actualized. So I still have hope and uh, oh, wow. Can you, did you see what I saw? <laughs> oh, I, as I was saying, I still have hope and then suddenly it became active, right? And then it became inactive again. So that was false hope. <laughs> that was false hope. I thought, wow, did the price suddenly spurt up to within my price range? Um, I don't know what happened, okay? So that was quite divine moment. It gave me false hope. But it's okay. I still believe in the price. I, I believe in the FTC coin. I know over time, I believe, okay, my own personal belief is that the price of the coin will, will gradually increase and uh, um, pray and hope that it will go back within my price range, okay? And so this is the V3 version, you see, I this was the V3 version, this was the V3 version, so... Now, let me get out to go to the wallet that has the V2 version. <sighs> okay, V2 version. Let me take a look at this wallet. Um, while I'm here, I should go to wallet, remember? And then go to swap trading, remember? And then here, go to liquidity, remember? Okay, and so I'm here. And uh, thank God, this looks like it is still active, right? But in V2, there is no price range to be determined, okay? But um, looking at it, I'm, I'm not sure what to study or even despite reading all those texts, I still am fumbling along, still don't quite understand, frankly. Um, I see that my liquidity is about $74. It seems to have dropped because I think when I bought the liquidity was around 80 because at that time the price of one FTC coin was around 400 okay then uh, you know there's this APR is at 47.51 percent I understand that with this then the share that I'm holding is this benefit 
Okay, other than that, I am still not very sure. Let me take a look at my token. You remember, we are given a token, right? So, oh, by the way, you see, this is the V2 version. Okay, V2, V2 version. All right, and this was done through DAPP, through Trust Wallet. Okay, linked up, understand? So, it's V2 version, yeah? And then uh, going back, I want to take a look at my token. Okay, so this is where my cake LP token is. And it is at this. I'm not sure what it means. Okay. But for those of you who can give me um, very clear layman, easy to understand language of what this means. I know this is a token. It signifies our ownership, but what does this figure tell me? Is this my gain? And how is this calculated? Okay, if you can um, advise, then I will welcome you to please comment in the, the, the comment box below. Okay, so that's it for now. Uh, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If so, please thumbs up and... Um, give me a like on this well once again just to summarize i have talked about what liquidity is about i mean contributing to the liquidity pool what are the benefits what are the risks what is the difference between v2 and v3 and also lastly i have done a live demo to you on one of my inactive accounts on v3 and another which is my active account on v2 all right so with that i wish you a blessed weekend and may all our finances be in abundance with fintosh okay god bless all